Hello guys and welcome to this video on writing to the I.O. port on the TI-83 Plus series of graphing calculators. So first, TI Basic cannot by default write to the I.O. port without some sort of driver. Luckily the driver is so simple we can create it on the calculator itself. Um, this can be done in three steps on the calculator itself. One, create a pro new program. Two, write some hex codes in it. And three, compile it. So just first create a new program. Step one, create a new program. Call it theta out. Step two, write out the program. So as you can see, there are two codes listed. Um, this is because the TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition works slightly different from the TI-83 Plus, TI-84 Plus, and TI-84 Plus Silver Edition. So the codes are slightly different. Make sure to write the correct one for your calculator. Because if you don't write the correct one and your code is wrong, it could cause your calculator to crash, dump the RAM, and then you lose all of your programs that are in the RAM. So make sure you use the right code. Basically, if your calculator has a monochrome screen, it's going to be this calculator. If it's a color screen, it's this one. So ASM PRGM and ASM 84 CPRGM, these are found in the catalog. And then make sure to write these hex codes exactly as you see them, because if there's any mistakes, again, your calculator will crash and dump the RAM. So make sure these hex codes are written exactly as you see them. Now to compile the program, you get asmcomp, this function is in your catalog, then program theta out, that's the program you want to compile, then comma program out. This is the name of the program after it's compiled. So that's why I put the theta before, because I like to use theta just to indicate this is source code, and so then I remove the theta when I compile my programs to indicate that is the compiled version of the program. So this, when you run this, it will generate a program called PRGM out, and you can delete PRGM theta out afterwards. You don't need that anymore. You just need PRGM out. So now we can actually write to the I.O. port. To write to the I.O. port, you need to store a value in the ANTS variable between 0 and 3. Um, so to store a value in the ANTS variable, you just need to put that in TI basic code, you just need to put that value on its own line. So if I put 1 and a new line, that value is automatically stored in ANTS. So as you can see here, I put 2 then a colon and 0 and a colon because a colon acts as a new line. So I'm essentially, um, when I write a 2 here, that's essentially storing that 2 value in the ANTS variable. So the value has to be between 0 and 3, so there are four possible values. Um, then you, after you store a value in ANTS, you call the program out. So I say 2 colon, so 2 is stored in the ANTS, then I call PRGM out. So make sure you put ASM this function before the program, or else it will give you an error. So this can also be found in the catalog. So this is just a simple TI basic program um, named test. So this line right here will essentially write the value 2 to the I.O. port. The I.O. port's default value is 0. And as you can see down here, I write 0 to the I.O. port. And I wrote it right to the default. So a big warning you need to know is reading, or I mean writing to the I.O. port without writing the default afterwards will freeze the calculator. So as you can see at the end of my program, I write to the default. I write zero to the I.O. port at the end of my program. That's important because if you don't write the default afterwards, the calculator will freeze. So the, de the default is just the default value that's being, that's written to the I.O. port at all times. Um, when you actually want to do data transfers, you could, you write different values. But when you're not using the I.O. port, you have to have written the default to the I.O. port. So you always have have this line at the end of any code that is using the I.O. port. Always write the default at the end. So here in between, I just have wait for a key press, because if you just write the value 2, then write the default, it's going to do nothing. And so I write the value 2, then I wait for a key press, then I write the default. So we'll basically be writing the value 2 until you 
press a key, then it will um, write the default and end the program. After you write a value to the I report, you must write a zero to it at the end of your TI Basic program. So here's a little table. So I said there are four write values, zero through three. So, and remember the TRS cable has the tip and the ring that can both be pulled high or low. So if the default is zero. This means the tip and the ring are both pulled high. They both have 3.3 voltage going to them. If you write, if you use one as your write value, if you write one to the IO port, the tip will be pulled low. If you put two, if you write two to the IO port, just the ring will be pulled low. But if you write three to the IO port, the tip and the ring will both be pulled low. So for demonstrations purposes, here we have two LEDs attached to the TRS connector at the same time. One will be powered off when the tip is pulled low, and the other will be powered off when the ring is pulled low. They're both pulled low, they'll both be pulled off. They'll both turn off. So as you can see, this they're both hooked up to the ground on the negative end, the sleeve. But then this positive end is connected to the uh, ring, while this LED's positive end is connected to the tip. So here's a simple program I just called Siren. So essentially what this code is doing is every second it will switch between a 1 and a 2, that it, and it'll write that 1 or 2 to the, um, as you can see, x colon uh, ASMPRGM out, it'll write the value x to the I.O. port, and it'll keep switching between 1 and 2 every second. So this code here, get time store into L1 all the way to end. This code here basically just um, basically just says wait one second. And so it's waiting a second between every loop. And this program's gonna keep going till you press any key. And as you can see, I wrote the default at the end. That's really important. You always wanna have a way to break your program properly so you can always write the default at the end. And the way I have you break this program is you press a key. So this is divided into two blocks, but that's just so you can see it all at once. This is the first part of the code, and this is the second part of the code. So this part of the code will come underneath this part. So I actually have a little demonstration video. And as you can see, I got the siren program, and I got my two LEDs. And now I'm going to turn the light off and run the program. And as you can see, every second it switches back and forth. So now this is another program. Um, this one's called Clock. This one's very similar, except what it does is it just keeps counting up. And so 0, 1, 2, 3. And, well, actually the X minus 1, it counts backwards. There's a reason it counts backwards. I'll explain this in the next video. But it actually counts backwards. So it goes 3, 2, 1, 0. And when it hits 0, it's goes back up to 3, so 3, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0. And it keeps on writing that to the uh, I.O. port. And again, this breaks by pressing a key. And so I got another video for this program called Clock. So here I turn the light off, and I run the program. And as you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Or actually... 3, 2, 1, 0, but it's, at, the reason I call it clock, because it's like, it's like a 2-bit binary clock, so um, that's the binary value for 0, this is the 1's place, the value, binary value for 1, this is the 2's place, binary value for 2, this is then the binary value for 3, so it's like it's counting up, 1, 2, 3, 0 but actually it's counting down four th or three two one zero 